Hello, I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today I'll be answering some questions regarding VMware Workstation. Uh, primarily, this is as a result of some of the other videos I've made. Uh, recently, for example, I covered Windows 11 and suggested that one of the environments you could want to put Windows 11 beta into to test out would be a VMware environment. Now, I got a lot of comments and questions of people who are completely befuddled uh, don't understand how to get it, where to buy it, what it is. Um, some people are asking me, do I need a server for this? I only have a workstation. So let me run through uh, what a workstation is. So the first thing, if you don't know where to find it, is I would actually suggest that just go to, let's say, Google and search VMware store. So that is the place you just go to store-us if you're in the us.vmware.com. And that's where you can purchase it. So as you see here, there is Workstation 16 Pro. That's the one that I recommend. So if I click on here, you can click on buy and give it a second. So what you're looking at right now is $199 for the Workstation Pro. So what does that do? Well, this is a version of VMware that will run directly on top of Windows 10. If you have a Mac as well, you can use this as well. There is a version for that. Now, what we want to have is, um, well, this one, I already have it installed on my machine, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. So what you would do is you would end up with this when you launch it. Let me just make it bigger here so you can see it. And it looks pretty boring from the get-go, so when you first install it, you, you get this. Now, if I wanted to try out an operating system such as Windows 10 or Windows 11, or if you wanted to do testing with uh, other operating systems, Linux and so forth, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Now, once it's installed and you end up with this blank slate, if you will, what you will do is create a virtual machine. So this is an operating system running on top of your Windows 10. So let me run you through what this would look like. So you would basically click on add a new one, I'm going to use custom just to show you some of the settings that are available. This is very similar to what you would find if you were running this on top of a server. Now, the difference between this workstation environment and an ESXi that I've described before in previous videos is the ESXi actually runs directly on the hardware. So what that means is if I have a server, I would go and install the ESXi directly on that server, there's no other operating system. And once I have VMware running at that point, then I can go and load other operating systems on top of it. In this case, I've got an extra layer. So what I have is I have Windows 10 working on my workstation, my machine, and my PC at this point, and I've installed VMware Workstation. This is version 16 Pro, as I've mentioned. And now if I go and install another operating system, what I have is Windows 10 with VMware on top of that and another operating system on top of that. So it adds a layer. It is obviously not as efficient, not as uh, you know resource friendly, I guess. And remember, if you're going to create a VMware uh, machine, so VM in this case, you're going to have to select part of your cores, so part of your CPUs, and your memory, and of course, disk space. So all those things will be attributed, those are resources, to the virtual machine. So there's a certain limit to how many virtual machines you will want to run on a workstation. Of course, if you're not running them all at the same time, if you have the disk space, you can certainly have multiple virtual machines just sitting there waiting for you to need them. Uh, one of the reasons we use these a lot is for testing purposes. So in the other example, my previous video, if you've got Windows 11, you certainly could go and test it out and you're bored with it. You simply delete the virtual machine and that's the end of it. Uh, the other thing is if you're developing software, if you're uh, testing out uh, you know, anything that, or if you suspect something is terrible, sometimes uh, people will provide me with uh, beta software and whatnot. I don't wanna mess up my own machine, so I'll go ahead and run it virtually and do it that way. And of course, what's really nice about virtual machines is there's an aspect to it called a snapshot, which allows you to sort of freeze it in time and go back to that snapshot really, really simply. So let's let's move ahead and create a dummy virtual machine here. And one of the things that I've discussed in another video is the hardware compatibility. 
So the idea here is that if you're going to migrate this virtual machine to something else, so let's say I want to create a machine and maybe next week I want to move it onto a server, well, then I, I'd want to make sure that this is compatible. What I mean by that is let's say my server is running 6.5, it would be a lot easier at this junction to simply select the compatibility to be 6.5 so that from that moment on I could migrate it more easily anyways to that server. There are ways around it. Find one of my other videos on the subject. I have covered that as well. So in fact I'll put uh, the link below and uh, potentially up there as well. So in, in this case, it's, since it's just an example, I'm actually going to leave it at, uh, let's see, SX7. And what the higher this level of compatibility is, the more new features you can enjoy. For example, uh, they will be able to cope with more processors. They'll be able to cope with more memory, with you know things like that. So let's just go ahead and pick this one here at random. It really doesn't matter too much. And where you see here, the other products that are compatible to it are ESXi, so that's the version for the server. There's something here called Fusion. So Fusion is actually the name they've given the Apple product version. So instead of being called Workstation, it is called Fusion, and that's what that is. So I'm not, so I'm not selecting anything here. There is nothing to select. You simply click hardware compatibility, click on next, at that point, they would say, hey, where are you getting uh, your ISO? So an ISO is basically the equivalent of a CD or DVD inside of a file. So if I wanted to, by here, by default, I've got Windows 10 ISO. So if I wanted to install that, then this is where I would get it. And so I could say, okay, that's fine. Um, actually, here I could say I'm going to install it later. Go to next. That's going to ask you what it is. So at this point, I could I have a little list here. So I could say, okay, this is going to be a Windows. Um, let's not go back too far. Let's, let's leave it to Windows 10. And side note, if you have older operating systems you want to keep running for some reason, maybe you had software that ran in Windows 95 or Windows 7, then this is you know one way you could do it. You could say, hey, I still have XP Professional and load XP Professional in here. That is one way to do it. Of course, I always check uh, with Microsoft for licensing and so forth, because sometimes you may not be allowed to do certain things. And so I, I trust that you will look into that yourselves. And of course, anything you install, you're uh, supposed to have a valid license for. So let's go ahead and do next. And then we're gonna give it a name. So you can call it uh, test machine and it asks you where it's going to be saved and i'm going to leave it there so i'm going to say next and it asks you what firmware type so is it going to be using a bios or okay so i'm going to leave it here at uh, uefi and this is where i pick the number of processors so this is uh based obviously on your machine if you've got a two core machine that's not really going to be great uh in my case i've got lots of cores so i could say hey you know what i want to allocate four um, or do, actually the way you can do is you can say I've got a single processor with how many cores. I apologize, I need to try to read and talk at the same time. Apparently it's a challenge. So I could say, okay, I want eight cores on a single processor. This is a virtual processor, by the way, so it's using your physical processor. So I do next. And this is where you select how much memory you're going to give it. Obviously your workstation uh, needs to have sufficient memory to be able to run this and your existing operating system. So if you only have two gigs of RAM, you're going to be um, in a world of pain potentially because things are going to be super slow. So in this case, I've got lots of memory, so I can just uh, you can either type it here or you can you know it tells you what the recommendation is. Uh, but you can you can move things around here. You can do next. And then uh, you can, for the network, we're going to use uh, network address translation. It's going to piggyback on our network card since we have a single uh, network card. Not actually uh, accurate in this case, but um, typically you'd have one network interface card or a NIC. And uh, in this case, we're just going to leave it as is. Say next. And what kind of disk are we going to give it? Well, we're going to use the recommended LSI Logic SAS go to next, it's going to ask me, okay, 
it's going to recommend i've got an nvme drive in here in fact i've got multiple ones so this is what it's recommending you say next and it's going to say do you want to create a brand new disk or use an existing one so we're going to go ahead and create a new one and how big do you want it so this is where you could say i want something really small and nimble because i'm just testing it out um store everything in a single file do you want to split it do you want to so there's a few options here we're going to leave it to split into multiple files uh due to the size at this point it really doesn't matter all that much it's going to ask you to give it a name for a vmdk file and we're going to do next and now we could customize things if we wanted to and in customizations one of the other things you'll notice is the display so you could say hey how many displays is this going to have uh how much memory do you want to give it for the, the graphics card do you want to um have usb for example i could select usb 2 only or make sure that i've got 3.1 in there uh funny side note as well if you don't have a usb controller set here at times you will find the mouse and the keyboard are going to be erratic that's especially true uh, if you using a virtual machine on an ESXi, uh, I've run into little uh, funny scenarios where you create a new machine and all of a sudden there's no keyboard or mouse that are working on it. And it's simply because there's no USB controller defined. Um, generally, as you can see here, there's one that just miraculously just pops up by itself. Um, sometimes, obviously, it uh, has not done that in the past. It's rather uh, sporadic and intermittent. So if you don't see one, you could just simply click add. What do you want to add? And you can select in here. For example, if you're using legacy parallel port or serial port, uh, maybe you're in a, a production environment. I see a lot of serial ports. You could simply click on it and say finish and it goes and adds a port. Of course, uh, that's all assuming that you have the corresponding physical ports. For example, if you're going to be adding a USB controller, you need to have an actual USB controller on your machine in order for it to connect to it and be shared to the virtual machine. So once we're done, we simply press close uh, and click on finish. And that's all there is to it. Give it a moment. And now we have a new virtual machine. Now I've not set this up and the whole point of this video is not to go and install an operating system. If you like this video, by the way, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. We really appreciate that. That really helps us out. So I've got one here called Windows 10. So I'm going to go ahead and see, as you can tell, I've got eight gigs of RAM. I've got four processors. I've got a very small hard drive. This is all the information I have. And I'm going to go ahead and as if this was a DVD and you just press play, basically. And what happens now is this will boot up a Windows 10. So this is a test machine. There really is not much here to see. It was really more a matter of uh, showing you, uh, you know, what happened. If you want to play around with settings, if you want to find out why certain things don't work well, this is a way to do it. It's a great lab environment. And of course, if you were to run, um, for example, I've run things like specific accounting packages that I, I wanted to keep safe and wanted to keep separate from the rest of the environment in a business, you can run it into a VM here. Um, so this will run under a lot of scenarios. Um, most typically it's corporations, small corporations that have older software, older systems, ERPs, CRMs, you know, those types of things where they're, it's uh, production related and they'll want to keep running it. Perhaps it's an old accounting package. And even if you're not using it anymore, you might be able to say, hey, Bob, I really need to have access to this data in the future. Uh, if there's an audit, if uh, I want to produce a report that you know we'd never uh, thought to produce before, I want to be able to go back, uh, whether it's you know five years, 10 years back, and I need this, oper this old operating system to be able to run that application. This is the way to save it. And you could, of course, keep this machine closed and only turn it on when it's required. Uh, do keep in mind as well, another little hint is when you have these things, um, if you turn it on and you have automatic updates set on here and it does, you know, it is configured to see the network interface card and so forth, uh, there's a chance that when you turn it on, it will suddenly start updating. That might be a problem for you because in some instances you may have, I'll give you a perfect example, you may have 
Adobe Flash running on there for something very specific. And if you have an early version of Windows 10, it's not a problem. If you shelf this and all of a sudden turn it on and it updates, well, it's going to take the Flash right out of the Windows 10 for security reasons. And that might not be appropriate <laughs> and it might mess you over for what you're trying to save in a pristine condition. Of course, that's where things like snapshots come in that can be useful. Uh, but once the machine has decided to do the updates, already pulled in some information, it might be too late. I'm just telling you, I've had some people who have turned it on and realized that, hey, uh, there was an update that had already been started in the past. So when you're turning it on, you're in effect just completing the update. It's already too late. So hope this uh, this video was useful uh, it's rather short and to the point um, if you want to if you're interested in this you want to run this on a server and you're a little hesitant there is something called the hypervisor which is the free version from VMware uh, really it is a full blown package of the VMware ESXi it's quite um, simple to to set up and put together and the, the big thing is you go online, you register for it, and it'll give you a code. Again, to my knowledge, this is completely free as a hypervisor. This is more for a lab setting. I would not recommend it for a production environment. However, if you're a one-man shop or you have very uh, few people, uh, people have done it. The main hindrance of using that version versus the one that you're paying for is um, the types of backups that you can make. Um, I use a product, for example, called Veeam. Uh, quite a lot. There's Acronis as well that we've uh, done a podcast with in the past that have wonderful products. Uh, those products need to have a paid version of VMware in order to do a backup at the server level. This is for ESXi specifically. So ho hopefully this was uh, useful to you. We uh, Thanks for watching. You could always uh, visit us at www.ctobob.com. Leave some comments below. We love to read those and we do try to answer as many of them as we can. So hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.